Hey everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn. On this episode, I chat with Roger Bernard, and he shares a bunch of great Kiss stories he has, as well as his experiences putting together his great and legendary Kiss Black books, as well as some photos he took at concerts. I think you guys are going to really enjoy hearing his stories. It was a lot of fun talking with Roger. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. Now, without further ado, let's jump in and get started with my conversation with Roger Bernard. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn. Today I'm really excited to have with me Kiss fan, rock fan, photographer. We've all been excited about seeing his work lately online. Welcome to the show, Roger Bernard. How you doing, Roger? Hey, very good. It's good to be here, man. Yeah, man, I'm excited to have you. So, you know, like I just said at the top here, you've kind of I guess, gotten Kiss fans excited in the last couple of weeks here, sharing a whole bunch of photos. You've been very generous sharing them, sharing them with me and letting other people share them as well. Um, first, thank you. You know, those are some amazing photos that you took. What is it now? Getting 35, 40 years ago. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, thank you. I mean, your introduction uh, was a great and it was kind of <laughs> strange to hear photographer because I never <laughs> considered myself one mm -hmm. of them. I was just a fan taking pictures and because uh, uh, taking memories is very important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it obviously it goes back to when I started collecting Kiss and all those old pictures and I, that's when I realized that oh god I wish some more people took more pictures of the Coventry or uh, the daisies and things mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. thank god Lydia was there to take most of them absolutely but uh, when you see that I said god I, I have a chance if I ever go to a Kiss concert I'll try to take as many pictures as I can mm -hmm. even though I'm not a professional but uh, yeah and then it got a little harder as you know back to 1979 70 um, 79 was still good here mm -hmm. i'm from quebec city so mm -hmm. in montreal and quebec you could still bring a camera but in 1980 boy that changed it became mm -hmm. very 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 strict mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if you recall but the van halen pictures that i posted mm -hmm. <clears throat> i was only uh well when i saw kiss for the first time was uh, i was only 17 years old but i'm gonna jump here in 1980 when i went to see van halen and I, I insisted on bringing my camera, and I did not know it would be that strict about not bringing a camera. So I did the two-hour trip. First of all, I had to borrow a camera, a 35 oh, yeah. Pentax from mm -hmm. someone. And um, so I had this camera that was worth more than I can make in three months <laughs> working. Mm -hmm. right? So it was very valuable. So I'm carrying that. <clears throat> I go see the concert. I get uh, in the, uh, first of all, oh no, a little story on that before. Mm -hmm. I went behind the forum in Montreal and I wanted to see David Lee Roth or whatever, the band arriving. And then mm -hmm. there's a big limo that pulled in. And just before they opened the big door to go inside the forum, the, the limo stopped. And you know how David is. He's very <laughs> flamboyant. He likes yes. to show himself, right? Mm -hmm. So he gets out and I'm literally 10 feet away from him. Mm -hmm. And this may be like, 10 of us that are in the back mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. jean jackets and like you know long hair that's what sure. we are uh -huh. and i got the picture right I, i'm getting ready to take a picture of him outside the limo with an arm in the air i said this is going to be great mm -hmm. the bodyguard next to him goes he screams real loud out loud he just goes drop that camera wow so, <laughs> oh man so i put my camera down and mm -hmm. i clicked it when it was down, but nothing came out. <laughs> nothing, oh, man. So I said, oh, man, I missed a good opportunity right here because nobody else would have had something like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I realize how, how strict they were about pictures right there. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> to go in, it says no photography and this and that. So I had to put the camera in my pants and the <laughs> lens in my sock because mm -hmm. like, I had to that look normal when I walk in and mm -hmm. I was fine I went there mm -hmm. so when I get and I had the third row ticket by the way nice mm -hmm. uh it was the first time I ever bought a scalper ticket it was uh the guy was asking 60 bucks for each ticket I was with my girlfriend at that time and um 60 bucks scalped right each, <laughs> scalped yeah scalped, that's crazy Which, I mean the ticket the ticket was like 850 I think right. I think was the right. price of the ticket mm -hmm. so that guy and then the concert is about to start so uh that guy's getting desperate he said okay 30 bucks each. I said, okay, mm. I'll do it. Mm -hmm, so I, mm -hmm. I paid 60 bucks for two tickets on the third nice. row center in wow. 1980 for 
Van Halen. Nice. And, uh, anyway, so I get in and then I get my camera, right? I put the lens mm -hmm. and the first band is playing. I'm not taking pictures. I'm good. And I got that kind of, kind of a, a Boston jersey, hockey jersey on me. Okay. And so it was kind of loose and big. <clears throat> so I had my camera under me. And then the lights goes on. They remove the stage from the first band. And then here comes down with the setting up for the big, the big show. Mm -hmm. Now, here comes that roadie that I saw earlier that just dropped that camera. Oh, no. With a big, <laughs> with like a Santa Claus bag, like the pouch that he's carrying, uh -huh. green, uh -huh. dirty, <laughs> and he's going in the first row, mm -hmm. taking people's camera, and he's not putting him in. He's just throwing the camera Ooh. in there. Wow. And they're banging again. Mm -hmm. You can't hear the bang against each other. <laughs> oh, my God. This is not my camera. I'm now I'm <laughs> freaking out. Okay, I'm taking my camera, and I said, I put it on the floor and I put both feet over it, uh -huh. try to hide it. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. then he goes in the second row and he's going in the row. Right. No, he's oh, gonna, he's not going to do the entire like floor, right? right, right so yeah. he stopped at the second row. On the third row, he came at the edge of the aisle and he stuck his neck to see if somebody had camera. I said, he didn't see mine. And I, right. I was sweating. I swear. Right. I was sweating. Oh, so, man. And then like, and then it was okay. So right. I said, okay, good. I got my camera, which is not my camera. Right, right. So I put it back on, all the lights are out, and I'm taking pictures. Mm -hmm. And the guy in front of me is here in the click, and he goes, he turns around and he goes like this. <laughs> There's a sign that you can be in trouble. Uh -huh. I did not get in trouble. So I got a very few pictures. Mm -hmm. But that was one of the um, stressful story of taking pictures when he was not allowed to take pictures. Right, right, right. But anyway, so that was one of the barrier that it's unfortunate because. There was so many opportunities to take great pictures and concerts, but mm -hmm. uh, but um, to go back and let's go back in the beginning as far as when I started taking the pictures. Yes, yes. Um, uh, so, well, maybe I should start back as when I when I became a Kiss fan. But that's yeah. Quick, so that's what I was going to ask you: fan. when did you become a Kiss fan and when did you start sure. taking pictures? So go for it. <laughs> so 1976. Uh, nice. That's the first time I heard of Kiss. Mm -hmm. And as, uh, there was a friend of mine who says, you know what? You like monsters, because I was very much into famous monsters, mm -hmm. the magazines and, and any horror movies. I was into that. He said, you like that, but you would totally like a new band called Kiss. Mm -hmm. I said, really, Kiss? That's a strange name. I said, okay. <laughs> so they kept, kept with me, but I never, invest, I never went any further on it. <clears throat> and then another friend of mine in 1977, it was, I think, around uh, spring, April, probably. And he said, you need to listen to something. So I said, okay, I go to his place. He's about the same age I am. I was 16 years old. I was, I'm sorry, I was 17 years old at that time. Mm -hmm. And his brother was three years older. And he's the one who was working and he was buying albums. So he had all kind of albums. He said, you need to listen to this. He had a live and he put the drum solo, mm -hmm. 100,000 years, 100, but just the drum solo. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the cover now. The cover alone, like, I, I'm totally gone. I said, okay, yeah. I like mm -hmm. it already, right? Mm -hmm. So he puts a drum. I'm not big on drum solo to start with, mm -hmm. a, little, a little side note here. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I listened to it, and I said, okay, that's that's impressive. It keeps going, and it keeps going, and there's a pattern to it. I liked it. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know what? Could you play the first song? I'd like to know what exactly they all sound like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he, played, he plays dupes. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all I can see, all I can see on that is, like, first the Gene, Gene's face on that album, and then I go to Paul, like saying, we got you kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know, mm -hmm. like we're in control and mm -hmm. we have you. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my God. I said, I have to go buy that album. So I went to buy that album and stuff. Nice. And then another friend of mine, the first one that was telling me, have you ever heard of Kiss? I called him. I said, I finally listened to Kiss. I thought it's incredible and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we hear that they're going to be playing in Montreal for the mm -hmm. Love Gun tour. And I said, okay, let's go buy some tickets. We mm -hmm. don't even know if it's the first day of the selling or not. We're right. just totally ignorant. And I never went to see a concert two hours away from my hometown. And mm -hmm. I don't know if my mom's going to say yes or no or whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we go buy the ticket. And then I tell my mom we bought tickets. And mm -hmm. she said, it's OK. So we go and I bring with me a camera. It's not a 110. It's a 120. So instead of having rectangle shaped pictures, mm -hmm. they're like kind of square. Right. Yep. So but it's very low quality, right? OK. So that's what I brought with me. And I posted those pictures in the past and uh, on my uh, page and mm -hmm. Facebook. And um, they came out okay. They mm -hmm. came out fine. It mm -hmm. gives you a little bit of an idea. Anyway, mm -hmm. so that was my first time I ever took pictures to a concert. Nice. First time nice. ever. And, yeah. and that was so, also your first Kiss concert? That was my first Kiss concert. So first that Kiss was, concert was the first time you took photos also. It's a good yeah. way to start. It's a good way to no, start. Right? <laughs> but I kind of wish I had more uh, knowledge on the, all their songs and album because all mm -hmm. I knew was um, a live one. Oh, wow. And there was only there was only three songs that they played. Sure. 
And sure. that album, I mean, it was Fire House, it was Rock and Roll All Night, and uh, Black Diamond. Right, right. And uh, so those are the three that I said, like, okay, I know those ones. And then <laughs> right. I remember that uh, somebody played me uh, Love Gun a little bit before, and it was like mm -hmm. da 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 da. And mm -hmm. I remember when he was on the platform and he was doing it, mm -hmm. uh, I said, okay, that's the, that's the new song now. Right, right. Playing. Okay, right, good. Right, right. right. And, so then I became like a serious, like my appetite for Kiss was for Kiss was like to the roof, right? Mm -hmm. I said I need to know more. I want more. So I was trying buying uh, magazines mm -hmm. and buying magazines and like, whatever. If there's a picture this big in it, I would buy it at that mm -hmm. magazine just mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. little picture. Right. So yeah. I was like mm -hmm. crazy, like mm -hmm. like you know, most of us. Most, like were, most of us, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I'm getting through that and. Um, you know, the first magazine that really drove me like, holy crap, this is incredible. I just took it out here. And, yeah. you know, uh, Mark Cicchini. Oh, says yeah. For very, about 35 very years, I know Mark. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's, he always says timeline is so important. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's going to come in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. After two months after I saw the concert, the concert was in uh, July uh, 12, 1977. Two mm -hmm. months after that magazine came out. Oh, yeah. Know that well. Mm -hmm. So if you were like a new fan and you go, online and you buy this magazine and you go through it say okay yeah that's pretty cool because mm -hmm. now there's some incredible stuff coming out but you don't like really go crazy mm -hmm. i mean man when that came out i was like first of all i couldn't believe that there was a magazine that was dedicated just for kids that like right now this is like christmas for me <laughs> right. i hit the lotto mm -hmm. right this magazine i can't believe it's only a dollar i said mm -hmm. whoa mm -hmm. so i bought two or three of those mm. Uh, and the reason, there's a reason why I was buying multiple copies on a mm -hmm. magazine is because of, of my books, which I will talk later. Yes, absolutely. I, I don't want to have the reversible one. So if there's pictures on both sides of the page, I need another one so I can mm -hmm. put the other page down. <laughs> yep, so yep. That's why I was buying multiple ones. So we're going to keep going. And then I was uh, in, in Quebec City. There's not much that can come on KISS. So whatever you see with magazine was the best one. But as far as like uh, prop and... Uh, not prop, but um, old coin management merchandise. There was not that much coming up. There'll be some, but you have to be lucky. Posters was pretty good. You had a good choice mm -hmm. of posters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in 1978 uh, and towards the 79, there was the um, there's more magazines coming up, and there's another one that came up, and this one. Yep. When yep. when this one came out. Because of the pictures, I mean, I was always looking for the early, early, early pictures. So 73 was my year that I wanted mm -hmm. to find. 73, 74 is like what I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this one is loaded. Of it. There's a lot of stuff in there sure. that, that is early. So I said, okay, this one is like a masterpiece. Uh, I would still remember it was cold. It was in Montreal. I was in, in the street. They had those vendors. I had those racks outside, and I saw the blue cover and i said mm -hmm. <laughs> whoa this is new and i just arrived i exit the bus i see that i'm buying one i, said, oh, I gotta buy multiple i bought mm -hmm. three of them mm -hmm. so i was all excited so that one to me so far it's my favorite magazine of all time That's that awesome. one yeah. yeah um as far as like sometimes uh go with like what's your favorite album what's your favorite song mm -hmm. and that i try to do the top five and my favorite my favorite album is alive okay for kiss understandable yep mm -hmm. my second favorite is going to be a little bit surprising because there's a lot of uh, personal and nostalgia involved in it, and that's going to be this one. I will tell you why. Oh, this one. That's my all-time favorite album. So <laughs> so this one, there's a reason why I'm so much into it is when I started, uh, after I saw the, the Love Gun concert, mm -hmm. now I said, okay, I, I, I got to do stuff because when I get into something, I go pretty, pretty hard. Mm -hmm. And, um, I said, I got to do, I'll do a show in my basement. Hmm. So I started doing the stage, the steps. I mean, obviously you cannot do that many steps, <laughs> right? right? Because mm -hmm. it's not that high. Mm -hmm. But I had like about four steps. I was putting the aluminum foil and then the lights. And it, it was, uh, it was fun. I mean, I was like kind of satisfying. And, but that's when I bought the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The mm -hmm. originals. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it has more songs that I never heard because I had mm -hmm. only a, a, a live first. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, let, let's listen to the other songs. So I put, when I got to the Hotter Than, than, than Hell, which is mm -hmm. like an incredible album, mm -hmm. when we got to this one, the songs that were coming out was like, holy crap. I said, and it, it because I was kind of building the stage, I was connecting with it and mm -hmm. I had like a personal attachment. Like a main line was like crazy. Mm -hmm. It was like so mm -hmm. much into it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And, uh, but anyway, so that's for, for that reason, that's my favorite album. Right. My favorite song on Alive, Watching You. 
Okay. Yes, that's mm -hmm. my favorite song. Mm -hmm. For two reasons on this one, I guess, that I was trying to analyze and find out why. <laughs> I think it's because the, you know, we were used to album in those days that had only one disc. Now you have a double. Mm -hmm. So when you put the th side three, that's a reminder that there's a lot more coming for you, right? Sure. You mm -hmm. thought you were done. There we go. That's coming. Mm -hmm. But the opening riff, the guitar. It's a great riff. It's a great riff. It's a great riff. So yeah. good. So yeah. yeah, that's my favorite song, followed mm -hmm. very closely by Dukes. Right. Right. Well, you can't go wrong with either of those. And it's yeah. funny because, I mean, I've been a Kiss fan also since 76. But through the 80s, I was just telling somebody else the story last week. Through the 80s, when I was in high school and I was bored, I would pretend to be taking notes in class and I'd put like yeah. top 20 lists of Kiss songs for me. Okay. And always number one and number two was this really deep unknown song that unless you were really deep into Kiss, nobody knew and it was Coming Home. And I love that song and I love that album. And to this day, I say that that album is probably hands down for me maybe the greatest album any band any time any era it's i love that album so when you say oh it's a surprise i was waiting for you to take out like unmasked or something like that and <laughs> when, when you took out hotter than hell i'm like well no of course that's a great album <laughs> of course good, good. so you saw them in 77 when did you start getting into like the other albums like buying the love guns and you know the solo albums and all that did you now start oh, to become yeah, so that was up that, to was it. that was it. Oh, I caught yeah. it very, very, very quick. I had to get everything. So yeah, every money that I was making was going towards Kiss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like for for the following three years, all the money was going to Kiss. Like right. I'm talking everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much everything. Like 99% of my money was going there. Um, yeah, I, I had a lot of stuff. I mean, I, then I realized at one point I said, "Damn!" I said, "I can't get everything. There's too much. Like mm -hmm. I need to focus <laughs> on something." Right. Mm -hmm. At one point. Mm -hmm. So, like in the early '80s, <clears throat> I um, I was speaking only French, by the way. Mm -hmm. I want to learn English. I said I need to move. Uh, I was I moved to the west coast of Canada so I can learn English. And mm -hmm. when I did that move, it was after the Elder. It was in 1982. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything kind of kind of died down a little bit on Kiss. Mm -hmm. I took it easy over there because now I was living on my own and it was a different surrounding. And Kiss was not as big as before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. kind of took a like, kind of a back seat if you if you mm -hmm. say mm, but um yeah so until 84 obviously when i came mm -hmm. back to mm -hmm. back and i saw them but that's uh, that's another part of that story so mm -hmm. to stay chronologically i'm gonna go back in 78 okay. when i was buying everything and then <clears throat> um here comes um dynasty is about to come out mm -hmm. and they're going to be touring so i said okay now this time i'm gonna get it uh a better camera than my 120 mm. and a friend of mine from school said if you want to borrow mine you can have mine and i borrowed his mm -hmm. and then now it was a 35 and he's showing me how to put the film the roll and mm -hmm. then you mm -hmm. crank it and said okay so we go over there and i like to take unusual pictures as you can see like mm -hmm. when the, the vans or the, the big semi trucks love on the that. back yep i, I love that. that i took mm -hmm. pictures of that i think them bringing the stuff inside mm -hmm. I, whatever i could do i didn't have a backstage pass but mm -hmm. i could do i tried to do the best i could mm -hmm. and uh so this time i had uh, tickets on the 10th row on the floor mm -hmm. and uh, i was I had all the makeup i had my boots i had everything and um it was those years the entire show, you would not be standing. You'd be able to sit down, mm -hmm. believe it or mm -hmm. not. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, true. When they arrive, you're up, but then mm -hmm. after the second song, people Everybody start sitting down. down. Very true, yeah. yeah. So uh, there was, I remember there was about 10, 10 seats uh, to my right. There was a guy in jean, and he had a beautiful mm -hmm. uh, camera with a big lens, and I'm sure he probably got some incredible pictures, but <laughs> something <laughs> coming up. At one point, Gene threw a towel Mm -hmm. And the towel ended up in front of them. Okay. <laughs> there's about like five guys that went for it. Yeah, and yeah. He had his camera. And he has camera. He dove <laughs> oh, down on the floor okay. to get because he was Gene and there yeah, was yeah, a towel yeah. from Gene. I don't care I'm about getting the camera. That. <laughs> I want I want that towel. And and did he get it? Uh, I think he did. Okay, I, nice. I can recall he was like, but I tell you when I saw him, he was standing he was standing on his chair mm -hmm. and he dove all the way down. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my God, the camera. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, right, 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 right. Right <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, so that Absolutely. was one of the side things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> let's go to that concert dynasty. People mm -hmm. say, OK, they got like the uh, Mardi Gras kind of uh, colorful mm -hmm. costumes. Mm -hmm. And it's a poor kind of tour. They didn't barely make any money. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the energy that was backstage mm -hmm. 
well, I didn't go backstage, but I saw when they were entering the stuff, like the, the people around, like it was like the hype. It was mm -hmm. so through the roof. Mm -hmm. When you were in there, the people screamed like hell. The way when Paul was talking to the people, uh, the connection was like electrified. Mm -hmm. It was so intense. I was like, I can't believe I'm so close to see them right now. And mm -hmm. it, they could have done anything. It would have been like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So that was probably the highest from my hype for Kiss. And 79 was probably one of the highest. That's interesting. And, Let me ask you a question. So, you know, yeah. it sounds like you were a teenager at that time. Is it, oh, it didn't bother, right. So it didn't bother you. Like there were people like myself at that show who at the time I was nine, 10 years old. Right. That was my first Kiss cousin. It didn't bother you to see kids at the shows at that time? I. I was with my brother who was six years younger than I was. That's he was so cool. 13. Mm -hmm. So, and my mom and dad actually mm -hmm. were in the upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to see that, so we had to get on top. That's so great. So, yeah, the whole family was there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I knew how that was. That did not bother me at all. That's cool. I mean, that's very cool. there for the. I mean, trust me, it was. I screamed so much, I couldn't mm -hmm. talk at the end of my concert. Mm -hmm. But I, I took a lot of pictures. I took about maybe I had five rolls of thirty-five pictures. Right. Wow. Okay. Here's a heartbreaking thing that happened. First roll, beautiful. Second roll, beautiful. The third roll, I took a lot of pictures, but then it was stuck. Ooh. I could not rewind it. You know when mm -hmm. you try to rewind yeah, it at the end? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you rewind. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized a little bit after what happened. You know, you gotta push the button to, to rewind. Mm -hmm. I did not push, you didn't push the button. Uh... And it was stuck. So and I had two more rolls with me. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? What do I do? Do I just keep it? Mm -hmm. So I opened it and I took it all out so right. they were all ruined right. but I got two more rolls, and I'm glad I kind of did that because uh, that was when the drum went off at the end so mm -hmm. I got great pictures okay so, okay very nice so uh, so that was for my second concert I was taking pictures and that it sounds like it. you have about 120 photos roughly or more from that show right that's true uh yeah about wow. 100 incredible neighborhood some of them are no good like I mean they're very like blur but others like during firehouse oh my mm -hmm. god when they got like that dry ice coming down mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. top for the sneakers that come down mm -hmm. oh my god those are beautiful that's amazing those are great awesome yeah, that's great awesome awesome they, they so then did you, did you did you get to see the band in 83 i guess when they came on the creatures of the night tour no this is uh so okay i told you i went to alberta yeah to learn to learn english mm -hmm. so when i was in alberta my girlfriend was still in quebec and they came to Quebec. Mm -hmm. She's the one who went to see them. And she said, I'll, she goes, I'll take pictures for you. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. So she was, I think she had to be in the first row because mm -hmm. the pictures are so incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, telling you stellar pictures. One day they will be online. I will mm -hmm. I will post them. Nice. Uh, Look forward to it. Mm -hmm. They are like, actually, there's one of uh, Vinny at one point. Yeah. Vinny is like literally maybe 15 feet away from her. Mm -hmm. And he, he's pointing right at her like Very that. Cool. And it's like, actually that is so clear it's not blur it's wow. beautiful nice and uh, and the most striking pictures also is uh, uh gene gene mm -hmm. is like the real demon and mm -hmm. i mean it's like massive and it's proportioned perfectly you know sometimes i think dynasty the boots were too bulky mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. that's what i think when this one creature is it's more like the love gun boots yep. and they're like mm -hmm. shaped perfectly so it has a lot to do mm -hmm. um to make it like you know likable and mm -hmm. i think it was like that, that yeah that stage and the way the outfit were that was like my god I said, i'm mad i missed it then when i decided to come back to quebec that's when they went the other way so i missed it right right, 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 right. i wish i was able to take pictures on that one but mm -hmm. she did very well so which yeah. which is good so then you were a long time fan at this point how did you feel when they took off the makeup was it something to you that was disappointing did you say oh i was a, i was okay with it i was uh, <laughs> there's one side to say oh okay the makeup is gone but after the elder mm -hmm. um I was still, I mean, I like the music, by the way, uh, the mm -hmm. album, I, I really, I was digging it, mm -hmm. uh, not as much as the other one, but I was still like into it. Mm -hmm. But um, when they went for that, I said, finally, we get to see a good, not trying to hide mm -hmm. picture, full mm -hmm. face of how they look like. Mm -hmm. I was okay with it. Mm -hmm. cool. And the album was so good too. So right. that was, oh, great. was great. Yeah. So was Quebec then the first time you saw them without makeup, that Quebec? Yes. So, okay. Awesome. So. Talk to us about that, right? Because to me, yeah, I, I said before, I have, your show. I have a lot to tell you. I'm sure you do, because it starts with pictures behind the stage. It starts oh, with I, pictures. No, it starts before that. Right. I, before I, that. I, I, didn't, I shouldn't have said so, right? You have pictures behind the stage. You have pictures in an empty arena. You've got incredible pictures of the concert. Yeah. 
Yeah. Tell us about this because this, this is incredible. You, I'll tell you exactly how that mm -hmm. felt and the whole atmosphere that was going on. Mm -hmm. So the day before the concert, I'm with my brother, six years younger, right, Steve? And we're both like, okay, what do we do? And now uh, you see those, those uh, maybe we should really mm -hmm. re briefly say the books. Mm -hmm. uh, I have books that are called the Legendary Kiss Black Books. Mm -hmm. And they're about 35 pounds each. I got eight volumes. So this was my ticket for all those pictures that you saw. Okay. Those, that book. Mm -hmm. So what I did, um, so we we're there the day before the concert. It's like six o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And it says, we got to find a way to see them. And if we can go backstage, I mean, I had tickets. Mm -hmm. It was in the first row. But I said, we need to find a way to get backstage. And in those days, there's no meet and greet. So you got to yeah. go. <laughs> right. if you have a connection, good. I have no connection. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I got to do it. So I said, okay, let's be smart about this. There's only one airport. It's a small airport. Mm -hmm. Let's call and find out how many flights are arriving tonight. And they mm -hmm. said, there's two flights. And one mm -hmm. is coming from New York. I said, okay. okay good. <laughs> so, this is what I did. I took an old suitcase mm -hmm. and I put one of my book in that suitcase. Okay. And I went to the terminal and waiting for that plane to arrive. And there's not even like the, the you know, that tunnel where you go in. It's like you go down the stairs, you're in the cold. And mm -hmm. it was March mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 11th. Yeah. And it started to get like there was a there was a storm starting brewing. Mm. Okay. So I said, Oh, boy, it's gonna be it's not good. But anyway, so I'm watching everybody coming in me and my me and my brother. And they all come in. And then here comes those two guys. One has a silver case just like this. Mm -hmm. It's like a little case about this big. And it's got, because I was uh, uh, playing in a band, uh, he had like the Dean Markley sticker on it okay. for mm -hmm. guitar strings. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, that's it. This guy has to be connected. Right. And mm -hmm. it's not a guy with glasses, curly hair, and this one has a normal briefcase. Mm -hmm. So they go to the carousel waiting for the suitcase to arrive. Now I'm going with my big, heavy uh, uh, suitcase, and I go and said. Would you be, if, by any chance, with my broken English, like it was mm -hmm. like just a little, and I tell her, would you be connected with the Kiss World? He said, he said, yeah. He said, I'm the guitar tech. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, good. I said, uh, I'd like to show you something. So I opened my suitcase and I show him the book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he go like, oh my God, Gene and Paul would flip to see that. I said, mm -hmm. could you arrange something? <laughs> and he goes, he gets, he gets his card out. They said, yeah, tomorrow just come and show that card in the back, the mm -hmm. back door, and they're gonna mm -hmm. let you in. Okay. And so you can bring those books in. I said, oh. I said, okay, good. And you know what they said after that? They said, make sure you bring girls with you for Gene and Paul. <laughs> that's what they said. I said I'm not oh, kidding. so they typical. So typical. Yeah, that's, that's what they said. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going back home and I'm looking at my books and I say, like, what else can I put in those books to make mm -hmm. them better? And mm -hmm. I'm looking, like, it's too late by now. I mean, it's like, you know, the books, are, there's so much work in it. And mm -hmm. But anyway, but I was like, I barely slept that night. Mm -hmm. So here comes the day after. It's in the morning, we're getting ready, and I said, okay, let's put all the books, I had eight of them, put them all, and uh, I'm gonna bring, I had an old, I had a clock that I had made, that is, just, there was one of the picture backstage that I posted, you can see that clock actually, it's there. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it's four pictures of Kiss, and there's a little Peter, um, uh, Eric Carr in the very middle, but yes. anyway, that was pretty the one cool. With the, so like, the pictures, like, cut out yep. on the yep okay i know exactly, exactly. what she's talking about that's one yep. so yep. i brought that too i brought another book that had only posters and i brought a lot of a lot of stuff right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. every book were wrapped in a garbage bag the green garbage bag that it was wrapped around mm -hmm. to protect them i didn't have any case mm -hmm. so i i it's not not it's snowing okay it's bad it's snowing but in quebec if it's snowing trust me it takes a one hell of a blizzard to stop everything sure. so everything is still mm -hmm. open so mm -hmm. but it's like annoying because now we gotta go and walk with the, all those to the door and i knock at the door and finally somebody comes in and i show the card say, okay come in mm -hmm. so we get the door open we bring the book my, my brother and i there's only him and i and then one guy gives us the backstage pass now here we go first time mm -hmm. ever in life i'm getting a backstage pass so i was mm -hmm. like holy shit i'm putting that on my leg <laughs> i can't go anywhere i want he said let's go to the dressing room I said, oh, really okay <laughs> so go to the dressing room now first of all let me just tell you the feel when we walk in Contrarily to like 1979, where there would be like action and noise and mm -hmm. crazy, mm -hmm. dead silence. Really interesting. You hear maybe one or two guys doing something where the stage is. There's wow. barely any noise, and there's nobody backstage. Wow. Okay. Interesting. It's almost like I don't know. It, it was almost like you know the fact there was a snowstorm, like nobody could make it to work. Okay. And it, it's a few people. That's what it felt like. It was kind of a little bit of a letdown for me. I said, oh, my God, this is not what it used to be, what I right. remember. Right? right. So we get in the dressing room. 
holy crap. So you saw some of the pictures. Mm -hmm. The trunks are open. The outfits are there. Mm -hmm. You get the table with the food, a few chairs here and there. I said, and then the guy leaves. We're alone. My brother and I are both alone in the dressing room. And oh. there's even where Paul was going to be dressing. This is a picture that I never took, and I regret not taking it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm still grateful for what I did. Mm -hmm. But they were on the floor, a mat made of paper. So you take a big piece of paper, mm -hmm. thin, you slice it round, and you mm -hmm. put it on the floor, and it was two pairs of slippers on okay. it. That was next to stable. Wow. So <laughs> comfortable, you know, just put the slippers on. Yeah, and that was like, I, I I'm so mad that I did not take uh -huh. that picture. I think that was the, the coolest thing. Right, like, right. It's such a unique thing. Right. It was like, you know, the people that are trying to make them feel like royalties kind of yeah, thing. Right, right. Here's your first Here's your slippers. Right. Exactly. That was there. So I, anyway, so that was next to his table where he's going he to put the, the rouge and the makeup and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the normal makeup, mm -hmm. not the kiss makeup. Mm -hmm. So now I'm looking. There's a big trunk that is open, big green trunk. There's mm -hmm. a picture of it. And there's an incredible picture, uh, three and a half by five of Paul backstage to mm -hmm. another show that was probably given to him. And mm -hmm. it was right there. I said, oh, look at that picture. My brother and I would both look at that picture. I said, oh my God, <laughs> I wish I could get it, right? But mm -hmm. I, said, I, I ain't doing anything wrong here. Right, right, right. <laughs> right now we're alone here mm -hmm. and I want, it, I want it to stay like that. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not gonna do anything to jeopardize or we want to be straight with them. Mm -hmm. So I put all my stuff. And then I got my camera with me and said, let's go see the whole stage. That's when we went in, the, in there. We took pictures of them building up the stage. Now, there was a bit more noise, but I'm telling you, there's not much going on. Hmm. There was never a sound check done. Really? Interesting. Never. The only thing that they did, the, the, the console that was on the right, mm -hmm. when I'm behind and taking a picture, at one point they did uh, push a button and, and it was like almost like if it was a Boeing that was taking off. Hmm. It was the so start loud. of the show, right? The start of the show, right? When they had that sound effect. I don't know if that's what it was, mm -hmm. but it was like in order to calibrate whatever right. that was there. That's okay. the only thing that we heard coming out of the speakers until there was a the band on stage. So even the stage hands and nobody else did a sound check at all. Wow, that's I've no, never heard it, of that before. I never, wow. I did not hear a thing, and I said, huh. "Oh my god." And you can see that those pictures, there's not that many people. Right, yeah, I noticed that. I noticed that. Very, like I said, it's very calm. Mm -hmm. So now I'm looking, okay, now we need to, um, anyway. So now we want to go back in the dressing room because mm -hmm. that's getting close to the concert. It's maybe like 6.30, 7 o'clock. And now I get there and then I see Marie-France Remillard, which is a friend of mine who was a journalist from Montreal. I mm -hmm. interviewed them back in uh, 76, 77, and 79. So mm -hmm. she's a very close friend of Jean. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so now I see her and she goes, oh, hi, how are you? I said, good, good. Um, and then we start talking. And I said, I'm trying to go back to go back in there. My stuff is in there. She said, you can't. The, the band is in there. You can't mm -hmm. go in. I said, mm -hmm. Really? I thought I could. <laughs> right, I, right. I'm supposed to get my book signed. Right, that right. was the number one purpose, right? I wanted to get the si mm -hmm. signature mm -hmm. and meet mm -hmm. them. So no, no. So now there's like, a few people come in and there may be like, I don't know, I'm going to say maybe 20 people okay. that is in that little corridor. Mm -hmm. They probably want something from a radio station. They can go backstage, sure. whatever that was. Mm -hmm. uh, now that finally the door opens. Who's the first person I see ever of a kiss world? Vinnie Vincent. Okay. Comes up. Mm -hmm. And his demeanor and his face was like, he was kind of, uh, I don't want to use the wrong names here. He was not like the new guy in Kiss. I was all mm -hmm. excited because right? mm -hmm. it was towards the end now. Yeah. Because no. Richard, Richard was there. It's like, okay. And he had like a little smirk, a little like mm -hmm. a little smile coming in. But you can tell um, he said, okay, I'm not expecting everybody to get on me. They're all going to go mm -hmm. on Jane and Paul, which mm -hmm. did happen. Mm -hmm. So a few people talked to him, but you can tell. He was the first one to walk out. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm looking. Then Eric Carr. Well, I'll, I'll just when, interject one thing. It's interesting because I think that show, if I got my timeline right here, is only about a week left in the tour. So that's like one of Vinnie Vincent's last shows with Kiss at that point. You don't know it at the time, obviously. Yeah, None of us yeah. did. But that show in Quebec was a week yeah. before the, the end of the tour. So that, that's interesting kind of hearing what his demeanor was like a little bit. Yeah, backstage. it was he was like kind of a tired of it kind of thing. Mm, interesting. Was, if I may say that, so it was not like the aura that was around him was mm -hmm. not like big right. right very interesting it's like okay 
So he just walked very, very calmly and quiet. Right. So then Eric Carr, Eric Carr, Eric Carr is always excited. Mm -hmm. But then uh, I'm waiting for the other two, right? Mm -hmm. And then Gene comes out. So that, that's it. Paul is my favorite, by the way. Okay. Paul mm -hmm. always was my favorite. He mm -hmm. still is. Mm -hmm. But Gene, I always connected because of his love for monsters. So I always mm -hmm. thought we'd have something very in common, him and I. Sure. Then, uh, then I heard, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Just before they opened the door, Marie-France is telling me, I heard that Gene is very sick. And they might have to cancel the show tonight. I said, really? What do you think? Is it something about his kidneys or uh, he had something? It was very to the point that he might cancel it. So mm. that's why when you see him, but he's so he's such a you know hard worker, professional, whatever, mm -hmm. he's not going to cancel that show if he no. can't do it. Mm -hmm. That's why he was dressed like that. And uh, you think about it, it was like 22 below zero outdoor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But then... Now I'm still in the vibe, you know, that I didn't see much, not much noise, not much hype. But now when Paul comes out in Gene, now that people like, I'm starting to feel the electricity again. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm taking pictures. And there was this kid, I went right in front of him. When I took a few pictures of him that you saw that I posted, but then I saw this little kid and he goes, Gene, he was about, I don't know, he had to be like eight years old, not any older than mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And he did a trick with his tongue where he makes it become very, very big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so try this. And he just took it out like a cigarette mm -hmm. and he started like twisting it and, you know, one side, one side, one right, side. Right. One side. Uh -huh. <laughs> the kid's looking at him like, I'm looking at him like, I never seen that one before. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Shit. So <laughs> that was funny. He was, you know, because he likes small, small kids. He yeah. likes like, he's great like that with kids. Yep. He mm -hmm. loves to make their day. Yes, agreed. Uh, but anyway, so that was him. And there we go. He's walking. Now I'm walking with them. And I'm taking pictures while they're walking. And I ended up, now people stop, but I keep going with them until they're behind the stage. Mm. Now I'm standing next to Gene, and Gene is like this, his arm crossed, looking at the stage. The lights are still on. I'm talking about the bright light. Mm -hmm. And Paul is a little further. But then here comes the guy that gave me the card the night, the night before mm -hmm. so I can go in. Now he just showed up, and he comes next to Gene, mm -hmm. and he sees me, mm -hmm. and he says, did you see his book? Hmm. his books he said uh gene says no he said oh you should see that man they're huge books and you would mm -hmm. like, totally dig it now i'm like oh shoot really mm -hmm. i'm really missing it right mm -hmm. now you should be excited right you're behind the stage with yeah, kiss right, right, right. but then i have this thing that is sinking into me at the mm -hmm. same time like i missed my chance to get the book signed right okay so, mm -hmm. but it's okay i'm still like okay then the lights goes down mm -hmm. then air car goes up and then they all go up and the mm -hmm. show starts mm -hmm. now i'm like okay i'm going back to the dressing room and when i walk in somebody opened them mm -hmm. and he's looking at them mm -hmm. and that's chris chris len is yep. looking at them mm -hmm. and i don't know who he is okay and he goes those are incredible i said Oh my God. I said, um, is there a way you can arrange something for me? He said, yeah. He said, just come at the, at the hotel later after mm -hmm. the, the concert, come to the Concord hotel and uh, they'll be happy to do stuff for you. I said, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah. now I'm packing everything. I'm, I, I missed the first couple of songs because now I'm packing that and I'm bringing everything back. So is that when you also took the picture of Chris? Cause you do have a picture of him sitting backstage, right? Which the, I was always like, car. well, that's surprising. Right. That's when I was with Gene, and then mm -hmm. Gene just took off. He's mm -hmm. probably in the, where the dark is. Mm -hmm. And then when I took the picture, that's when the lights just went dark, and okay. uh, Eric Carr is sitting behind his dog. His nice. nice. It's not a, that great a picture, but it's there. Nice. But okay. it reminded me that, okay, I was able, you know, I was standing with them behind the stage, which mm -hmm. is like something quite of unique course. for me. Right, right. So now, uh, one, another question for you. Mm -hmm. So you have those pictures of Gene kind of like, I thought he was being interviewed, like standing up against the wall. So is that just like he before the show? That's yes. before the show, That's just hanging just out. When he came out of the dressing room, That's there was a period. I'm going to say that period was about 15 minutes. Okay. To greet the people that were there and mm -hmm. mingle with them. That's when it happened. When one guy had, there was a CGRP. That was the little microphone that has, it was a, it's a radio station mm -hmm. in Quebec. Mm -hmm. okay. He was doing some kind of a brief. And another guy had a some kind of a little tape recorder mm -hmm. and he was asking him to do, hey, this is Gene Simmons. Welcome to right. whatever. That, right, right. To, it was a podcast, whatever it was that he right, had, right, exactly. but he did something special for him. He recorded it for him. He was like, and in those days, everything was free, right? right you right. go back, it's like you just got lucky you were there. Absolutely. So Absolutely. now I come back and I start taking pictures. Mm -hmm. By the way, when he did cold gin, mm -hmm. um, Paul came in with a bottle of tank tankery gin. That's mm -hmm. the bottle that he was yep. holding. Because mm -hmm. then he got a different gin, you know, depending on the concert. Mm -hmm. That's the one he was holding. Okay. Um, 
then I said, okay, I'm going to go walk around. So I want to get different angles. Mm -hmm. And my favorite angles actually are the ones when you're on the side of Vinny mm -hmm. and you get the stage side way out. Mm -hmm. like that. Those, yeah. those, mm -hmm. they came out good. Yeah. I really like those. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I kept, I kept snapping, snapping, snapping. And then uh, at the end of the concert, that's it. We got in the car. We went to the, oh yeah, here's a good one for you. Mm -hmm. I got in the car. Um, we go to the hotel. We arrived before they did, a little bit before. And now I got, I'm in the lobby and I got like a, you know, the valet cart. All my books are there. They are in the lobby and here they come. They're still the same outfit, mm. sweating mm -hmm. and a towel. Mm. And Jane is right there. And I said, okay, Jane, I have the books right here. So, okay, let's go take a look. And I see him sweating and everything. And I go like, do you want to meet like later? You want to go take a shower? I should have <laughs> never said that. Uh -huh. I did. So it had, and I knew, you know how sick he was. They almost mm -hmm. canceled the show. And then he right. was willing to come and look at the books. Right, right, right. Now that I think of it, like, you know, further after, I said, my God, he was like, he was so nice to do mm -hmm. that. I guess the show probably gave him some adrenaline. adrenaline right. mm -hmm. And he was like mm -hmm. still right. kicking with that. Right. But anyway, so they all went up. And the first one that came back down was Eric Carr. Mm -hmm. So Eric Carr was the first one to sign the books. So I had all my books there. My covers were ready to go so you mm -hmm. can sign. And uh, the thing about my books, I got eight covers. It goes from 1972 to 1996. Wow. And um, if you're featured in the certain book, then you can sign that one. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Eric Carr was featured only in the last three. So I made him sign three covers. So that's, that's the first signature mm -hmm. I ever had. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, the second one that came out, uh, Vinny never came down and Gene never came down. Mm but Paul came down. Okay. Thank God. That was my yeah. favorite. Since I, right, being good. Right, sure. I said, yeah. Oh my God. And he came and he, you can tell he looked at the books and he sat down on the couch mm -hmm. and he was ready for it. And it was like, now we're talking, it's about like 1130 mm -hmm. at night, uh, close to midnight. And meanwhile, Eric Carr went to the bar with two girls. Mm -hmm. There's girls there and he wanted to talk to fans and mm -hmm. there's some fans that went with them. They went to the bar, have a drink. I'm in the lobby. I don't care about a drink. Mm -hmm. And now Paul is starting to look at the books. They, mm -hmm. they get the first one and he's going through the pages. And <clears throat> I had some good pictures, but not what like I have now. Now it's like crazy what I have. Mm -hmm. But it, it was still, for the time, it was great. Mm -hmm. And he was going through that. Like he loved it. And so I, the first cover that he signed, he put, what a book, mm -hmm. Paul Stanley. Mm -hmm. I said, Right in the dead center. I said, okay, one down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he goes to the next one. Then he goes to the next. When he got to the one, I'm telling you right now, when he got to, when uh, Gene Simmons and Cher, mm -hmm. he went quick. He passed <laughs> so mm -hmm. quick. Like he was like looking and said, skipping pages and mm -hmm, stuff. Like mm -hmm, he did mm -hmm. not like that, that part. But um, uh, there's a one interview that he read entirely. The Playboy mm -hmm. 1977, December they, he read it all. We really? were all like kind of round, you know. And, that, is and that the one about when they were in Tokyo? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, that's the one. Mm -hmm. He read the entire thing. Interesting. I said, oh my God, he really took the time. And now the time is going, right? It's getting mm -hmm. late. Right, right. And uh, now we're getting other things signed towards the end. But he stayed on those books until mm -hmm. three o'clock in the morning. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. From almost mm -hmm. three hours. Right. And he had to be in Montreal the morning after. The next day. Right, right, right. So he didn't have that much time to sleep, right. but he really, really had a ball. And then I escorted him all the way to the to the um, ele elevator so he can go back to his room and then mm -hmm. said goodbye. And then, then I went like, OK, the day is over. And mm -hmm. it was freaking awesome. And then I'm looking at my friend, Pierre, that took the pictures. I said, I really hope your pictures come out good. <laughs> right, of it's me with Paul mm -hmm. with the books. I said, oh, man, I hope you come Absolutely. out good. So that was the 1984 uh, photo session. Now, let me just pause you for a moment. So all this talk about the books, and I've seen some pictures online, but maybe some people watching this have never seen or, never heard, of it, or yeah. heard of them. Do you, I know they're big and they're heavy. Do you have any of them at your fingertips where you could even just give a visual of what you're talking to? There you go, yeah, right, right so behind you. That's the case. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can see that. Yes, uh, yep, this absolutely. Is the case. So yep. this is the case where I put them in. I had those cases made about, oh God, I'm going to say four years ago. Okay. I started getting those. I went to a company and I said, okay, this is the book. Do something that's going to make my life easier about mm -hmm. transporting and uh, their own wheel and everything. So that, that works out good. But the book, this is one of the book here. You see this one? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So this is uh, actually, this one is number eight. So it's not as big as the other one. <laughs> not as big. The thing looks page. huge. No, 
but this is the last one and i still have pages to, to mm -hmm. add mm -hmm. it's funny we talk about that because i went to the uh printer that, to get more pages done mm -hmm. um i'm gonna go pay, pick them up tomorrow actually mm -hmm. and so this is one cover this is volume eight wow and i'm gonna show you how many this is the one that has the most autographs Check in it, it out. so yes. you got like a, you got ace over here on top yep Vinny is over here yeah um a roger thanks forever eric singer yeah yeah See the big here, two Roger, yeah. Eric Carr, Eric, Eric Carr is yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. Then Gene over here, Peter Chris, Paul, Bruce Gulick. Yeah, wow. And uh, so I, now I still need to get Tommy. Tommy Thayer, uh, right, right. To be there. That's uh, yeah. pretty much. And I don't have a Mark uh, Mark, right. Mark that I don't have. Mm -hmm. So that's the only one that I don't have for my for my books. Right. So yeah, and uh, I mean, obviously, this is a gold, 24, uh, 22 karat gold. Mm -hmm. volume and then my rb for my for my name yeah uh, the, the covers were made by my dad my dad worked in a print shop uh -huh. so this is the one actually was suggested to me back in 1977 when i had so many magazines he did uh, mm -hmm. he did some uh, uh scrapbooks on hollywood the actors mm -hmm. they were not as big as those but uh, he gave me the idea so if you want you can start building one i said okay that would be great mm -hmm. so the day after he came back with those big pages that he made and I started, I started getting my magazine. I mean, mm -hmm. big ego, we cut here, mm -hmm. and I want to go chronologically. So if there's a 73, then I put all the 73 pictures together. And obviously, over the years, it, I changed them. But I did a lot of mistakes in the beginning because I had uh, using a tape that was like too much glue, and it was going through the paper, and I lost some good pictures. Mm -hmm. Then I learned the hard way, and then if you, and after that, um, I was more careful how I was posting them mm -hmm. uh, but then you know it's something that kicked in not uh, about a year or two ago i was missing the original magazines when i was buying them okay. so i started going online and i started buying them back so that's why i was able to show you mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. magazines like for example like this one i remember when i found sure. that yep. I said, damn and then I, I cut instead of getting the whole cover i was cutting just the pictures and put it to 1976 mm -hmm. in my books and now are you crazy what the, what the hell am i doing right, right you need right. to have the whole cover. it's a cover you right right right. <laughs> right so but now I, I i was able to get it back i mean i'm buying them back slowly mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. more expensive than i used to of pay course, obviously. they're not a dollar each anymore <laughs> <laughs> no they're not right, right. so i mean i'm not planning on having everything but um uh that's where I'm at right now. I got that uh, nostalgia is still there, that's and cool. I want to live it again. People say, don't live in the past. I'm sorry. If you're a KISS fan, you're going to live in the past because you like to go back and find out. There's nothing the wrong with stuff. that. There's nothing to yeah. it. So, so the contents in these books, is it magazine articles? Is oh, yeah. it new, yeah. newspaper articles? Is yes. it photos that you've taken and others? Like, well, what's the content inside? It's a combination of all that, mm -hmm. but I don't want... I, at the time, um, I had to put my, my myself some guideline. What do I allow to do with it? Mm -hmm. First of all, I will never allow to be a picture to be like you know usual scrapbooks. You kind of put over another picture. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that because I don't want to lose the details of it. Sure. So okay. nothing can be over the other. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, obviously um, pictures, mostly pictures mm -hmm. from magazines, newspapers, um, original photographs. If you can find them in those mm -hmm. days, mm -hmm. that was difficult. Mm -hmm. You have to go online and go and order by mail. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and if you know somebody who took the pictures, then good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. <those. laughs> and so that's pretty much like what it was. Uh, if you got backstage pass, if you got like mm -hmm. uh, obviously stickers and things like that, go for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what it was in there. And how was I getting most of the stuff? Uh, pen pals. Mm -hmm. I was corresponding with people in Italy, mm -hmm. Australia, Japan. Japan, I got some great stuff from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody in uh, Sweden mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So those, and, and Paris. So those were the people that I was getting my stuff from. And um, yeah, so I was putting stuff together and then you, you know more people and then the internet came in and then I went like, Makes wow. a lot of great. So, so yeah. let's just say tonight you're online or whatever and all of a sudden you find 10 new pictures available from 1977 I don't know, i'm picking a year and you uh -huh. want to put and you want to put them in the book how do you do that oh or that's do, easy or do you just say this oh no it's easy okay so how <laughs> it's very easy look yeah when you remove the cover uh-huh all the page can be removed okay so it's very easy for me to add a page like right here i'm going to take this one you got this one here that was uh neil actually 
mm-hmm. from uh, from uh, Norway, and I, I I had him sign a page for me about the books, and he's, he wrote whatever he wanted, and I put a picture when he was looking at the books. Uh-huh. So what I do is uh, like let's say I I just found another page uh, today that I want to put after his page. Mm-hmm. Then I just remove the page like I just did. Yeah. I make my page, I put it there, and then I put nails over it. So it's very easy to add stuff. And if I'm not happy with the the layout that they did 10 years ago on a page, and I want to change it, I'm just going to take a knife, remove it underneath, mm-hmm. put my pictures, and do another layout that I like better. And I've done a lot of changes mm-hmm. like that. So my books, my books are never done, never. Mm-hmm. I, I always add stuff. Uh, I find new stuff all the time. You can't put all the pictures, so you got to mm-hmm. be... You have to be picky. Mm-hmm. You have to, mm-hmm. because there's so many pictures that exist. You say, okay, I'm going to put the ones that I really like, that are very important. Mm-hmm. And this is this is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I'm telling you, I've got to put, sometimes I'm removing some that I thought that were my favorite. And I said, no, you know what? That one doesn't fit anymore. I'm, mm-hmm. I take it out. Okay. And it's kind of like break my heart to take it out. But you have to, because otherwise mm-hmm. you'd have like, I don't know, 20 books. And mm-hmm. you know, right, right, right. I can't, right. Go, I can't go for that. Right. Now, what you did you- what year did you start the books? Was it like 77? 77. 77. 70 yeah, as 77. soon as you became a fan, you started At the them. beginning, yeah. That is like, amazing. I'm, I'm going to say, after I saw the concert, my dad gave me the idea of doing it maybe three months after. So I started doing one book. Yeah, I had mm-hmm. one book done by the end of uh, 1977. And mm-hmm. by 78, uh, I had six already. And then I ended up with eight because it kept growing and they right. kept getting. So now here's, here's the thing. Yeah. The screw, the screw that is there that you see here mm-hmm. was made in aluminum. And mm-hmm. aluminum is kind of, it's sturdy, but not that sturdy. But mm-hmm. when it gets that thick, now you get a lot of weight. You got to sure. be careful. Mm-hmm. It's just going to, they will they'll, they'll just snap. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I found a company that had metal screws. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's what I have right now. Wow. And what I did also, because of the gold on the top, the cover, so I had the screws plated in gold. So when they're there, it's, everything is in gold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one's all details, but you know, everything counts. So and you said those books go. are like thirty pounds, thirty-five pounds each. Yeah, just about. And wow. when you put them in the crate, because when I went to Atlanta, I brought mm-hmm. two with me, mm-hmm. and uh, there was with the crate one book, and the crate is about eighty pounds total. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're bringing all the books with you, you're, you're looking around three hundred pounds at least. Yeah, I mean, I. I I'll never probably go somewhere with all of them. <laughs> if I go somewhere, I bring one or two mm-hmm. just to show. Sure. Because, uh, yeah, because, I mean, you see the hat here, the Kiss Lounge? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's K- Kiko. Kiko, mm-hmm. like, yep. uh, you got, like, the lounge and they have like, all those mm-hmm. things. He wants me to go to his lounge so bad to mm-hmm. show a book over there, and I, I can't wait to do it. I mm-hmm. want to do it. Mm-hmm. But with the COVID, everything was put on halt. Right. So as soon as everything goes back to normal and his lounge is reopened, I'll be, mm-hmm. I'll be bringing one or two of those books, and I can't wait to go mm-hmm. and do that there because mm-hmm. those guys are, like, so much. So they're, they're totally crazy. Oh, absolutely. They're, like, the biggest Kiss fans and uh, – I have also a tribute band over there. That right. is, that's like, uh, right. Right. It's like I love them uh, very much, and they follow me, and I, I can't wait to go there and party with them. That sounds, gonna, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to put the 70s to the side for 30 <clears throat> seconds when I ask you this, right? because sure. I assume that would be your answer, but maybe not. Um, do you have, as you go through your books, do you have a favorite era? That when you look through it, they like, hey, I really love this era, whether it's you know the Asylum era, Crazy Nights. Again, I'm taking the 70s out because I'm assuming – that that would have that would have been your answer. So I don't want this to be too easy. Yeah. On you. <laughs> I'm gonna say, um, well, <laughs> I think the last book is uh, mm-hmm. the one that I covered at conventions in New York. Okay. When I was when I was going to the convention in '88, '89, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. those because you see I was a little bit dormant in '86. 85, 86, 87, and then in 88, that's when I started working on my books again, mm-hmm. and that's when uh, Crazy Night came out, yep. and I was going to the 1988 convention in mm-hmm. Rhode Island, mm-hmm. and then I went to the one in New York, mm-hmm. and all you can hear is Crazy Night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when you were at a convention, you hear Crazy Night, mm-hmm. and I'm having a blast right now because I'm having that flame that was into kiss reignited again mm-hmm. and I, you know it's like smell mm-hmm. smell mm-hmm. is a very good thing for memory to mm-hmm. remind you of something mm-hmm. uh and then the music is another one mm-hmm. so now i'm hearing crazy nights mm-hmm. okay that's the last album that they did 
mm-hmm. and because I never really listened to Asylum for okay. Animalize in mm-hmm. detail, and, you know, k- taking from A to B, like mm-hmm. at the end. I never did that, but this mm-hmm. one, I was hearing it, hearing it, so, mm-hmm. and it was like positive thought that was mm-hmm. associated with that. Mm-hmm. So that became one of the, my favorite album too, right. because of the memory that it was creating. Right. Of course, yeah. So when I do uh, my album, uh, my um, uh, my scrapbooks for number eight, I'm going through those pictures and now I'm having a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. There's also the, the limelight concert yep. mm-hmm. that I was there and I took a lot of pictures of that one as well when Ace, uh, Jane and Paul met with Ace at the end mm-hmm. and I got uh, all those things. It's like, it's all in there. So that's the one that I really mm-hmm. like right now to work on. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why it's not that thick. It's about maybe three quarter of the mm-hmm. other ones, but the, but the, the memories that come with it for you, right? right, right. Yeah, it's yeah. huge. So that's the one I like to do. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the one that came out the best as far as, like, layout of colors and pictures mm-hmm. are probably Asylum okay. mm-hmm. and uh, Animalize, those two. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, like, it's just working perfect mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because the stuff that were coming out, it was like, wow, right. it's, like, so cool. Right. So when I look at them, I go, like, you know what? It's not my favorite era, but... The pages are so like, wow, I was on fire when I was doing those. Mm-hmm. I, that's what I'm thinking. Well, the asylum is very colorful. I have to yeah. make those pictures pop. You know, whether you like the, the stage performance or the album is a different thing, but the, the colors have to pop when you're doing a book yeah. like that, you know? It was it was great. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So if, you, if it was like one year, no, it's more like a, it's a kind of a that makes package sense. there. That makes yeah, sense. And, you know, right. you, you're talking about those conventions. So I'm actually in New York oh, and I missed, I think, the first kiss expo or convention at the time they were called right but that's the first one too yeah so but i was at all the other ones and there was wow. such a cool vibe at that time with, with those expos uh, much different than the way it is today right because you'd go to those things and you didn't know what merchandise you were going to find oh. you didn't know what bootleg videotapes yep. were going to pop up year after year you know it was such a cool vibe being a fan and being a part of that in the late 80s so were, were you a dealer uh, you know, in the mid '90s, I had a table and I was selling okay. stuff. In the late '80s, early '90s, I was um, just going as a fan, hanging out, wow. and um, you know, meeting Ace Frehley, meeting Vinnie Vincent, okay. meeting Peter Chris. You know, meeting. See, I miss, off- I missed those. I was uh, I moved uh, uh, on the West Coast at, at that point. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. But on the '88 and the '89 mm-hmm. were the first two years that Lydia ended yes. up there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. I was a dealer on both. So okay. the advantage of being a dealer, you're there before they open the door <laughs> yeah, with exactly. hundreds of people come in and take everything, right? Mm-hmm. So now I see all the first stuff and I, I want to kick myself for that because my mentality, what I had in my head, I said, I'm going to focus only on my books mm-hmm. and everything else I'm selling. That's why I was, I even had a broken guitar from 1984. Wow. I had a broken, the, bro- the broken body and mm-hmm. I had the broken neck that a friend of mine caught from the creatures and oh, I sold wow. those. Ooh. I sold those. Ooh. I sold. Uh, I sold so much. <laughs> I sold so much stuff. Mm-hmm. All my posters, all my bootlegs, everything was going. Mm-hmm. So now I see Lydia, and I'm looking at the stuff she has. Now the first time. There's mm-hmm. the first time she's there, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I saw on that table? That's it. Her pictures. No. Yeah, yeah. the pictures the which pictures. I bought. Right. I saw right. the pictures. I bought mm-hmm. the pictures. Mm-hmm. Then I saw a black book. Okay. With all the old pictures, right? Right. And I said. And we're talking pictures from like 73, which you said is Correct. what you always lose. I, I was saying for. that, but my jaw was on the floor right? uh-huh. when I saw that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm almost like, oh my God, I need I need this. I need to buy that. And mm-hmm. she goes, it's not for sale. Right. Yeah, okay. So, but anyway, but I saw the script of Kiss Me the Phantom mm-hmm. of, okay. for Peter, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Peter script. Peter script, wow. Do you know how much yeah. she was asking for it? I'm afraid to ask because it's going to be something that you you pay like this in a heartbeat probably now. But uh-huh. 125 <laughs> <laughs> that's what's the price for it Man. and i didn't i did not buy it right of course of course because but we're I talking like only, eight, 1988 1989 yeah, time period i was right? only focused i was only mm-hmm. focused on buying pictures and mm-hmm. it, it's anyway so that mm-hmm. that's the item that i regret not mm-hmm. buying mm-hmm. um but anyway and then the year after i was there too and i brought some cash with me mm-hmm. and i said okay that black book that you have do you have it she goes mm-hmm. yeah i said i would love to buy it because can't do it. I did not even, uh, I had two grand on me mm. that I was willing to offer her. Mm-hmm. At the time, that was a lot of money. Uh, okay. It's a lot now, and it's especially a lot then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I did not even, I sh- maybe I should have showed her the money. Mm-hmm. Maybe she went, went for it, mm-hmm. but I, I did not even show it to her. But anyway, so when she said no, I said, okay, I'm not going to push it too hard. Mm-hmm. I said, that's it. But um, yeah, everything was cool. But yeah, the memories of those conventions, oh yeah. my God, people. Yeah. I mean, I, I took, the second time I was there, I took a long video, mm-hmm. uh, about 45 minutes of 
the energy that was going mm -hmm. on. But I mean, if you had a, a, a program from Japan or you had stuff, I mean, I was there yeah. and the guy goes, ask me a program I've never seen before. It was not a program. It was looked like a program, but it was a whatever. It's a Japanese thing. He said, how much for that? I said, 150. He goes, boom, boom. He's mm -hmm. paying you right away. People were like yeah. the serious collectors. Yeah, yeah. They were there. Absolutely. And they were like, it doesn't matter how much it was. They were buying stuff. And, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. those were those were good times. They, they were great times, and I remember that book that you're talking about that Lydia had at her table because you know again this is like eighty eight, eighty nine time period, and her book that she has out now, which is great, you know, um, that wasn't out yet. Those photos, there's no such thing as finding these photos online. So that was really, I say for me, the first time I saw those photos from '73, and I remember standing there, and I don't have a black book the way you do, but my jaw still hit the floor. I'm like, holy uh -huh. crap, look at these pictures. Yeah, I remember that very vividly, very clearly. So. You know, if you didn't experience it, nobody will ever understand what we're talking about. That vibe, and you said that so perfectly, that vibe that was in that room. I have a video of that, that black book. Do you really? The person who was with her, I don't know. I don't know if that was Peter's sister. I don't know who that was. Okay. I mean, I'm sure some, a lot of you guys could tell me mm -hmm. exactly who that person mm -hmm. is, but she's opening and she's going every page is telling you wow. that's the diplomat, that's the daisy. <laughs> that's awesome. Every single page is until the very end. That is yeah, awesome. Oh, so, uh, yeah. There's a friend of mine that took a video of the, the, the show from in 1988, and he, he filmed it like for him. Oh, so nice. it was like, oh, wow. Yeah, nice. that's pretty cool. That, that's that's um, pretty cool. Yeah. So that's, um, oh, yeah. You see this? Yes. Okay. And you know this book? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Page 47. Yes. Moose talks about a drumstick uh, when he was going to the, uh, the pro uh, shops to buy the drumsticks for Peter. Mm -hmm. And he said that he was like rolling them, make sure that they're flat and okay. this mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. and, he and he wrote in them that he still has one. Mm -hmm. uh, that stick that he's talking about is in this case. Oh, wow. So, we, yeah, I'll show to you. so I had this case made mm -hmm. and I'll show you I'm opening that up. And it looked like it was signed by Peter Chris, the case also, if I said it. Yeah, that's what I was going to mm -hmm. cover. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how it looks like when it's in there. Mm, nice. And nice. so you got the, it's in blue. Mm -hmm. And I think it's 1976 or 75 mm -hmm. because of the, the way the writing is. And, but anyway, so I got this. And when I went to the Peter Chris convention in mm -hmm. LA, mm -hmm. he said that he would not sign sticks or drum right. skin, things mm -hmm. like that. So yep, I said, okay, I mm -hmm. I'll bring, I'll bring my case. Mm -hmm. So I brought the case mm -hmm. and I, and I had the sticks in it, but mm -hmm. then just before I go in, I said, ah, maybe I better remove the stick because right. it doesn't want to dream. <laughs> yeah. So I took it out and I put it in my bag. Okay. And I said, I'd like you to sign this, this case. He said, mm -hmm. what's in it? I said, mm -hmm. actually nothing. He said, what? I said, I opened it. I said, there's nothing. I said, mm -hmm. and he thought it was nothing. So I said, I'd like you to sign that. And he signed it. Okay. So I got kind of a, you know, the, the stick is not signed. And anyway, I would have never had him sign that stick anyway. I agree. They, uh, I agree. These, like, if you have like a, a rookie card of it is valuable and stuff, mm -hmm. the worst thing for me to do is go sign agree. that thing. I don't want to touch it. This is the way 100 it is. 100% agree with you. Yep. It should not be touched. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So I'm very picky on what I want signed. Mm -hmm. uh, so my books inside, obviously, I want that. And mm -hmm. I have my first uh, Alive album. Right. that I would sign on top. I still have Gene to get, by the way, even though nice. I met them a few times, nice. I still have Gene to sign the cover. And, and that's the album you're talking, the literal copy that you had, your first album as a kid? Yeah. That is awesome. I still have that. That yeah, is awesome. That. Mm -hmm. it stays like I never, yeah, never got rid of it. Mm -hmm. um, do you mind if we go a little bit off topic of KISS? Uh, yeah, so I was going to just ask you, so, you know, we talked about your KISS photos. I was going to ask you, you know, I've seen you post, post online pictures of other artists. So, um, yeah. So, so, you, know, um, you mentioned Van Halen earlier, but talk about some of the other, other artists that you photographed. Um, well, actually, the one I'm going to tell you I did not photograph. I'm going to talk to you about two other okay. artists that I did not photograph, but I got a very, very cool uh, story on you. Go ahead. Uh, on that. So there's this uh, person that I know, uh, Stacy. She used to work for Kiss, actually, back in 88. She was a secretary for the uh, uh, Glickman, the, the yep. area, mm -hmm. the, whatever. Yep. So she uh, she's telling me that she doesn't get impressed or starstruck by anybody pretty much mm -hmm. except one person. She was in a hotel one day and she was in the elevator. The elevator stopped to a floor and 
it opens and who, who comes in? Prince. Hmm. Okay. Stepped in. Okay. And she goes, what he was wearing, first of all, was all satin. Mm -hmm. There was not a crease mm -hmm. on whatever he was wearing. <laughs> mm -hmm. But she, kept, she said he, there was this aura mm -hmm. around him. And now, is this that, like the late 80s time period you're talking? I'm guessing. I right. can, I'm going to have to ask her. She lives actually, literally, she lives about 10 minutes away from okay. where I live. Nice, nice. Uh, okay. So I would have to ask her mm -hmm. this particular detail. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, But I, it was kind of uh, surprising for me. I said, really? I said, uh, I knew, I mean, Prince is big and everything, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. to get her starstruck, I mean, that was like, mm -hmm. wow. But she said, because it's got this aura that you can feel like when you're mm -hmm. near him, mm -hmm. it's like, whoa, it's like, because there are stars like that. Like right. When you oh, come by, mm -hmm. you go like, okay, there's something special about that person. Even though mm -hmm. if you don't know them, you're going to feel it. Right, absolutely. So that was my uh, my quick little one on uh, on Prince that I that I heard. I thought I'd be sharing that with you. That's very but cool. uh, the other one, I work in restaurants. Okay. And um, I can help order everyday items. Of a big, of a big hotel, and then uh, so what happened is that there was this. Uh, I was told that this particular artist was here, was staying at the hotel where I was, mm -hmm. and I go like, okay, and um, I go like, okay, is he gonna come to eat? And they made the reservation. He was there for like five days, and the last day he made a reservation to come at ten, which closed at ten o'clock at night. So he's mm -hmm. coming at ten o'clock. Good. So the entourage of the band came a little bit earlier. They ate five people, and then I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Right. I want to go wait on him, but then cancel at the last minute. Mm -hmm. I said, "Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm missing it." Mm -hmm. So then I find out the day after that he extends his day for another five days. Mm -hmm. I said, "Okay, I got a chance now. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm gonna see mm -hmm. him in those days." He went to eat twice for lunch. I missed him because it was a different place because I worked evening. And then the last day, uh, I get this bodyguard. His bodyguard come to eat with his girlfriend a little bit earlier. And I wait on him. Connection is great. Uh, everything goes fine. When they're done eating, his girlfriend goes back to the hotel, but he's staying because the, the one who is protecting is coming later that night. Mm -hmm. And staying until, because he's coming at 10 o'clock, so... He finds out that I'm going to be waiting on him. He said, okay, that's perfect. I'm glad that you were waiting on him. Mm -hmm. And then he looks, he said, go ahead. He's right there. Now it's 10 o'clock. There's barely anybody left in the room, right? Sure. There's maybe mm -hmm. like three tables left. And <clears throat> so he's right there with his girlfriend, mm -hmm. uh, his own girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And I'm going like, okay, good. So I'm taking my, my wine list. I'm taking the menus. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to the table. I meet him. His uh, Elias name was uh, Mr. Lewis. So I said, good evening, Mr. Lewis. Welcome to whatever the restaurant is mm -hmm. and i go like um would you like to begin with something from the bar or see a wine list mm -hmm. and he goes uh, actually i'm not going to be drinking but she would like to have a glass of uh, white chardonnay from mm -hmm. burgundy i said i have exactly what you want and i said i'll make it bring it i'll make a taste and just see if she likes and then who am i talking to sir mick jagger wow <laughs> so I'm telling you, man, you mm -hmm. see. Uh, uh, as you're telling the please, story, first off, you, you, like, your, your smile's getting oh. bigger and bigger as you're telling the story. And I'm like, this could only end one of two ways. Mick Jagger <laughs> or Paul McCartney. Those are the only two people uh, that this could be. That's at the I table met, there. I met both of those guys, actually. Wow. At that place where I'm working. Mm -hmm. So, no, I got Mick Jagger was probably the hardest one because he's more reserved and secluded, if you mm -hmm. want. Like, okay. Uh, so anyway, he's... Uh, now I'm looking at him and I'm like literally four feet away from him, mm -hmm. right? Talking mm -hmm. to him. And I can see how deep the the, the lines are in his face. And he's like, that's that's the man. That's that's the mm -hmm. legend right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And he's extremely, extremely respectful and courteous when he's talking to me, professional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when he finishes a sentence, he kind of looks away, kind of thing, like don't start a conversation kind of okay. thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I, was, mm -hmm. I was just like being like nice and whatever needs to be right. done. I don't, I don't go any other branch try to talk about life. Mm -hmm. So that stays like that. So he was there for two and a half hours. Hmm. So, um, and now there was a party in the other room further down in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And they were, when he walked in and sat down, they were leaving and they saw them from outside. So they went, they were waiting at the front door for them mm -hmm. to leave. But they didn't know how long it would be there. Right. And then one person came in, and I went to catch that person. Said, so "Can't go there," mm -hmm. and escorted them back and stuff. So, mm -hmm. so the roadies, uh, I'm sorry, the bodyguard, mm -hmm. we was with the tour manager, and they were both seeing me working, trying to protect them, mm -hmm. and do that. 
and they were very appreciative of that. And they said, uh, but anyway, when they they paid uh, the bills for both, they said, uh, there we go. They they put the the percentage and everything, and they left an extra money in it. They said, do you know what that's for? I said, no. They said, that's for doing our job. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> well, I said, you know what? For him, I'd do anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they were, they were kind of smiling. It's okay. Well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then uh, that stayed like that. And mm -hmm. then there was only me, my server that I had with me, and mm -hmm. the bodyguard now. Now it's like 1230, mm -hmm. midnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the guy gets up and he comes to me and he goes, uh, Roger, he said, uh, I'm sorry to make you wait like that. I said, trust me, I don't, I'm enjoying this like you. <laughs> right. It's the best night of my sleep. life at work. Clock. I'm okay with it. <laughs> right. That's fine. I'm good with that. And he goes, and just when he said that, and he goes, uh, you stay up until three. What do you do? I said, I, I listen to music, uh, watch videos. He goes, what kind of music? I said, well, I grew up in the 60s and mm -hmm. 70s. So Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, mm -hmm. Pink Floyd. He said, Rolling Stones? I said, of course. <laughs> he goes, okay. And then, um, you know, small talk. We're having mm -hmm. fun and mm -hmm. everything is good. Then he gets up. Mm -hmm. He gets up with his girlfriend. He's ready to leave. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, the bodyguard turns towards me and he says, Roger, he said, stay there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go escort him back to his room. And I'm coming back. I have something for you. Oh boy, no, I'm mm -hmm. Yeah, really? Oh, mm -hmm. I have no clue what he's talking about. Right, right. Right. No, it's not going to be a signature because that would be totally inappropriate to ask mm -hmm. him for a signature. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So then he walked by me. I mean, uh, uh, Mick walked by me and he was like, I mean, I'm short, so he was obviously taller than I was. Mm -hmm. But uh, he, was, he said, Thank you very much for the evening. And he was walking back and everything is good. Mm -hmm. So now I'm starting to reset the table and then getting ready. And they said, Roger, Roger, there's somebody for you. I said, Of course, there was the guy who was back. And uh, he has nothing in his hand. He has nothing. Hmm. So I go like, yes, yes, what's going on? Mm -hmm. He goes, uh, I said, okay, Roger. He said, here it is. He said, every morning when he gets up, he does the same routine every day. Mm -hmm. He gets his guitar and he plays for 20 minutes mm -hmm. to warm up. That's what he does every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And then he reaches in his, in his pocket and he gives me this. That's the pick. Oh, that he, wow. That's a plate. The pig that he that he played with that day. Wow. So got, got, uh, that is so damn awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he gave me that, then I got a box, of course, to put that in. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think, you know, it would have been good to get it from from Mick, but I earned the trust right. of, of his bodyguard. And his bodyguard and he, was appreciative that, that you respected that. He didn't have that. to come mm -hmm. back. I mean, once right. he was at the hotel, he could have just stayed there. Right. Like, Forget it. Yeah. Right. Then he came back and did that to me. He knew he was going to do a wow, mm -hmm. and he was going to get me freaking excited. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. I sure did. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my God, this is, I'm going to treasure this thing for the rest of my life. Of course. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. yeah. And so that was my uh, my uh, meeting with uh, with him. Make but then Paul, Paul McCartney, I was telling Paul McCartney, mm -hmm. uh, Maybe five years before he came for dinner when he was uh, still with his wife, mm -hmm. and uh, um, we thought, you know, we could try to give him a table secure. No, he said he wanted to be whatever he was on the patio with like, mm -hmm. a lot of people. And then there was a fire pit a little further. And then after he finished eating, he goes to the fire pit, sit down where anybody can sit. So there was like twelve people sitting mm -hmm. around the fire pit, adults, right? They're, they're all like mm -hmm. you know, 40s, 50s, and they're just bullshitting with. Paul McCartney, they're talking about movies, oh, they're talking wow. about not just music, but about anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm listening to him and he's talking like if he knew those people. Wow. I, I guarantee all those other people that were around that they probably went back home saying, You're never gonna believe what right. they <laughs> exactly. I ended exactly. up talking with him. But down to earth, extremely, extremely friendly. Well to so, me yeah. to me with both of those stories, what comes through is that you treated both of them and we're talking about the biggest icons in the music world maybe yeah. ever you know uh -huh. and you treated them with respect and i'm sure you would have loved to have a photo let's just say with mick jagger uh -oh. but but you got it in some ways you got something even cooler you got this great story you got that token of appreciation back right that says hey thank you for respecting him thank you for respecting us you know and i think that's pretty damn cool if you ask me <laughs> yeah. oh man i mean i'm telling you just the fact that i lived it and it's in it's in it's in my memory, my brain. Absolutely. So, you know that's worth more than uh, getting a, a picture. Yeah, I picture agree. would have been nice, but uh, it, the picture is only to show people, you know. Right. And but the memory you really have it inside, and mm -hmm. it, that's what counts. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it's funny that you say that because over the last uh, I don't know five seven years, I've started selling off a lot of my collectibles that I've had 
except for the stuff I had as a child. Like, so I've kept like, literally I have like an Ace Frehley doll over here that has no head, but I kept it because my grandfather gave it to me, okay? <laughs> and people are like, well, why don't you get another head? I said, well, because it wouldn't be the head that my grandfather gave me when I was seven years old, you know? So I have the doll with, with no head on it. But when I was selling off everything, what I was doing is different experiences because I started saying as I get older, it's the memories that are more yeah. important than a puzzle on a shelf or something like that. You know, it's those memories. And to me, you just shared a couple of, to me, amazing stories about some great memories. Oh, I tell you, it's fun. I mean, I just love it. But what, what was your highlight of the, um, the, the Kiss Expo with uh, Atlanta, with the, the Vinnie overall? You, you know, to me, I will never forget, because I was sitting literally in the front row watching Vinnie perform acoustic, those couple of songs. And I can see out of the corner of my eye, Robert Fleischman Robert, standing yeah. up, watching and walking towards the stage. Now, I knew Robert had never performed in public with Vinny ever. Wow. Right. So I'm watching this and I'm like, man, is he going to get up there? Is he going to? And I could see like he's thinking about it. But I, I'm guessing in his mind, he's like, well, will Vinny appreciate if I get up and steal his thunder or whatever? Uh -huh. And he goes up there. And like, even as I'm telling the story, just the chills that I had, just like, wow. to me, it's like, you know, what? that was worth flying from New York down to Atlanta, spending a couple of days. That was worth it just for that moment. I thought that was an amazing, amazing moment there. The two of them on stage, maybe for the only time in a public setting. So if, if you ask me my favorite moment in Atlanta, that was it. Hands down, hands down. What's your favorite memory period as far as like uh, in the KISS world? You know, be... that, that one's easy for me, right? And I, okay. and I get some people are going to say, oh, but you paid for this experience. And I did. And I paid a lot of money for it, right? So I was on KISS Cruise 6. Okay. And I purchased a bass guitar from Gene Simmons. And as part of that purchase, you meet him. And you get to take guests with you. And then you get to get on a stage and perform with him. So first off at the meet and greet, it was me, my son, my daughter, and two other people. And I go to him and I say, Gene, you got to go easy on me when we do the performance tomorrow. <laughs> I don't play bass. Okay, I know I can't sing. I can't play a note. I got a few guitars hanging on the wall because they look nice on a wall. No other reason. Okay, I can't play a musical instrument. It's like, not a problem. There's a piano in the room. He's like, come over here. I'm going to start teaching you piano. I'm like, okay. Whoa. And he starts giving me a piano lesson. Now my son is with me who's six or seven years old. And I, before you said how Gene loves kids. And as you said that, I'm like, yes, I know that firsthand. He tells my son, come over here also. And he starts giving my six, seven year old son a piano lesson. Okay, so that in and of itself is cool. But that's not even the best part of the story. The next day we do the performance and Gene's playing guitar and it's like 15 people with basses on stage. And he's trying to have us write a song together. Now, again, since none of us really play bass, he's just calling the strings one, two, three, four, instead of like E, G, you know. So he's like, somebody on stage here, give me what chords you want us to build a song on. So I say, one, three, two, right? What, what hell do I know what those are, you know? So guy, those are going to be the chords for the verses. Now, give me, give me what chords you want for the chorus. And I go, oh, four and two. So guy, those are going to be the chords we use for the song. Then he turns around, he looks at the people watching in the audience. He goes, who wants to come up here and sing? My daughter goes, I do. So my daughter comes up on stage oh. and starts creating words for a song. So Gene is now writing music with the chords that I suggested. And all I did is throw out numbers. Right? <laughs> I don't want to take, but he starts crafting the song using my suggestions. And oh. my daughter starts writing lyrics on the spot. Two hours later, we have a horrible song, but we have a song, okay? Mm -hmm. And I say to myself, if you would have told me in 1977, <laughs> when I'm on the rug looking at that Kiss Alive 2 album with that guy mm -hmm. with blood all over it, that one day I would be writing a song with, with that guy and my daughter oh. would be singing, I would say, you're out of your friggin' mind. Yeah, for sure. Well, we did, and it's a it's a full song. It's not gonna win any Grammys, trust me. Okay, <laughs> but but it's it's an experience. Literally, it's the experience. I, I said I said you know it's literally me, Gene Simmons, and my daughter crafting a song together because everybody else on stage was like when he said oh, what chord should I play everybody else was like hum oh, and I was like, I was the person that gave that gave the suggestion so I say you know what there is a song that exists that me my daughter and Gene Simmons wrote together nothing will ever top that for me that's the, to yeah, me that so when you ask me that question I'm like that's easy that's an easy one for me so um yeah
I have wow. to I have to ask you though, with all your photos, would you ever consider putting out like a photo book of sorts? You mean uh, photo books about with pictures oh, oh, that I oh, that oh, I took oh, yeah. or pictures but, that I, that are in the books? No, pictures that you took, right? It's your property, right? So you know, you've got right. great pictures of Van Halen, other artists. So you have all these pictures, not just Kiss yeah. pictures. Would you ever say, hey, I, I could put out a photo book? Uh, you've got experience but, put together books also. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that because last night I got a, a a message from someone offering me that. Awesome. So we're only on the talking business right now. Okay. We're only in the talking, but it, it, it literally less than 13 hours ago. Wow. That's when I got this, uh, this message. <laughs> okay. So, very interesting. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm going to definitely pursue that yeah. and uh, see what does happen. I, I think so, it's amazing. You know, at one point I asked you, I told you, I said, yeah, I thought your kiss photos, the, the look it up ones were amazing. And you responded to me something along the lines of, I didn't think they yeah. were that great. I didn't think people would be excited. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. I mean, I, yeah, I like the ones that were backstage. I thought it were kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But there's uh, the other ones that I took, I was with um, a friend of mine, Pia. And he's the one actually who took the pictures when I was with Paul at the end. And both of us were there. And he had a lens that so he was able to focus and zoom or closer on those guys and he's got killer pictures mm. like so I, I always started my picture they were like yeah so so you know not that great <laughs> mm -hmm. and i said i'm never gonna share that with people but then when i started sharing the van halen the iron maiden mm -hmm. judas priest black sabbath pictures i said no why not so i'll just share the kiss ones because mm -hmm. i know that some people are probably gonna appreciate the ones at different angles mm -hmm. and then my God, it, like the response was like totally different than what mm -hmm. I was expecting. Mm -hmm. So that surprised me. That's why I kept posting more and more mm -hmm. until <laughs> they were all there. Really all there. <laughs> and you know, if I remember right, your Iron Maiden photos are really cool as well, right? Oh yeah, the Iron Maiden was good, but I think the best ones that I did was uh, Judas Priest. Okay. The Judas Priest, like, oh my God, those ones is like, the, the you see every facial expression of mm -hmm. uh, Rob Alford are, oh my God, they're like mm -hmm. to the top. Mm -hmm. uh, like there's one that I haven't, uh, haven't published because mm -hmm. I think it's my very favorite. I always want to keep some kind of a gem that is not online, mm -hmm. you know, sure, of course. and that one is like, he's going sideways and he's got like, his lips. It's all like twisted. Mm -hmm. He's like, just like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's such a good one. Uh, I did the same thing for a scorpion too. I got mm -hmm. a scorpion picture that I think that picture would easily be if you had a program and you open it in the middle you get a two-page poster to put that would be the picture i would put in there That's that cool. one is like a gold That's uh, so cool. which is good That's yeah so cool yeah. well you know roger i'm going to end where i started i want to thank you for sure. sharing your photos with us they've been amazing i will say to you if ever you do go forward with a book i'd love to have you back on and help you promote it because i know you thought the pictures were nothing special but <laughs> Every Kiss fan disagreed with you, so oh, no. sorry you were wrong. <laughs> yeah. no, they were really, they were really okay. amazing, and um, you know, yeah. to me, I, I appreciated them. I wasn't at that show, but I was mm -hmm. at the Look It Up show three days earlier at Radio City. So it was okay. kind of like, all right, this is the band literally a couple of days right afterwards. And I even just enjoyed hearing your stories today about them flying into Quebec. And I'm like, yeah, well, they were at Radio City on the 9th and the 10th. And you're talking about them flying in on the 11th. So it kind of like helps yep. me put together like that whole time period that I remember yep. very well and being so excited as a kid going to see my idols at, at Radio City and in New York. So um, it's yep. been exciting even just to hear some of those kind of details today. So so thank you for sharing that nice. with me. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me to... Yeah. Uh, Share my thoughts on that. Yes, I no. really appreciate this. Ab absolutely. And Roger, we will <laughs> certainly be looking for any other photos that you post online. And uh, again, thank you so, so much. I appreciate everything today. It's a pleasure. All right. Take it easy. Take it easy, man. Yeah. Alrighty. There you have it. I'd like to thank Roger for taking the time and chatting with me and sharing his stories about Kiss and everything else. I really love that Mick Jagger story. That was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, Roger. I hope everybody enjoyed this as much as I did. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you next time.